just uh, what do you want to see out of Will Howard this spring that you maybe haven't seen yet? Yeah, you know, I, Will is uh, obviously does such a great job of, of mastering his craft in, in the game of football, the, the quarterback position. You could spend every minute of all day, every day watching tape, fundamental principles, drills, improvements, and, and you'd still be, be busy. So uh, I think for him, just continuing to, to push the envelope, you know, of his own game, um, and, uh, you know, eh, there's not, whether it's footwork or um, progression discipline or defensive recognition, I think uh, not that it was, uh, he was great at the line of scrimmage last year, but even just his comfort level this year uh, compared to this time last year of, of being able to manage and, and run the offense and whether it be little uh, tweaks here and there or, or massive play changes or whatever, he's, he's, he's doing a fantastic job and just to, to continue to push the envelope. When you considered other options, of course, from a professional standpoint, what was that like and what kept you here? Yeah, it, it was a, obviously a tremendous honor uh, uh, to be, uh, you know, to get that phone call. But again, I felt like uh, going through the process and, um, you know, Lord really put on my heart that, that there was still work to do here. And, the, and that, uh, uh, again, my players and, and knowing that my mission here isn't done and, and uh, uh, you know, my guys really were the were the two things that that made me at peace with knowing I'm supposed to be here. And lastly, is is Jake Rubley kind of the unequivocal number two guy right now in your room? Uh, you know, it, it's a competition. Uh, all all three of those guys, you know, three main main guys behind them are, uh, uh, you know, will be competing. Uh, you know, uh, through the duration. Um, all three of those guys have, have done really, really good things. Uh, Jake's obviously got a head start with his age and, and his experiences. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, again, it's a competition, and, and each one of those guys is going to have to earn it every day. Picking up on that theme of the, the next three guys, what are each of those individuals' strengths and maybe some of the things they really need to progress with? Yeah, no, I, I think you can, you can definitely tell the, the, the game has slowed down for Jake a little bit. Um, you know, he's got, uh, you know, tremendous arm talent comes out of his hand, you know, he's accurate, uh, you know, and is able to, to really spread the field with his arm, um, you know, and, and, uh, like I said, the comfort of his offense, his comfort with the offense has allowed him to play faster, uh, and anticipate things better. Um, you know, Adrian Lara, uh, again, now, you know, going into his second year in the program, uh, he's got tremendous arm talent. I mean, the, the, the field gets uh, incredibly small when he's back there. I mean, he can spread it around with, with attachments, with down the field uh, passing game, and, and do so from any platform at any time. I mean, his core strength is, uh, is outstanding, and, and uh, he, he's, a, uh, again, a very natural passer, uh, still trying to get comfortable with, with the offense and, and what's going on around him. Uh, but he's done a great job and, and made extreme improvement from even middle of last fall to now um, and, and has done a great job. Um, you know, would say Avery, uh, you know, coming in is, is uh, uh, obviously just kind of learning, learning the lay of the land, you know, and, and trying to operate to, to be able to allow him to, uh, you know, to use his skills. He's obviously got the, uh, the best wheels of the group, you know, which is well documented. Um, you know, but again, all, all three of those guys are, are have very strong arms. They're accurate, natural passers of the football. Um, all three of them study. I mean, I, I come up here early in the morning before our meetings start, and and you know, multiple guys are in here studying, drawing, asking questions, helping each other. And uh, I think that's that environment is is truly tremendous for all of them as they go through this process. Lineman could have looked at Avery and said. <laughs> this kid's really good, but he needs to get a little meat on him for yeah. the Big 12 level. How's he progressing with that? Good. You know, I mean, I think he's, <clears throat> uh, you know, 10-ish, give or take, you know, based on the day, pounds up since, uh, you know, when when he got here. And uh, Coach True and his staff are, are doing a tremendous job. And, you know, I think for him, you know, he was always competing at something, you know, being uh, doing so many sports in high school. So I think... Uh, his growth physically will will happen pretty fast you know, now that he's just doing football, being able to spend some time in the weight room, and and uh, uh, you know it, it'll it, it's coming together. Finally, with Will is you know this is probably a question commonly asked for a guy that can't get weight off in terms of fat, but 
is there a too big moment for Will in terms of his muscle mass? Yeah, you know, I, I think, uh, um, you, you know, I think more body composition, kind of to your question, you know, of and and again, Scott Troush, our team nutritionist, does an outstanding job with body compositions and and really honing each him with uh, you know Coach True's staff of of honing each individual's specific goals and and how their weight program works within that. You know, Will's weight, <clears throat> you know, we wouldn't want that to change drastically either way. Uh, him continuing to work on the quickness of his feet, dropping, you know, a little bit of body fat and, and making that weight a little bit leaner, uh, you know, is, is, is something that he's working on and I think will help his game. And, and again, as those quarterbacks being elastic, um, you know, athletes, um, uh, core strength and flexibility are obviously extremely important in that, in that realm. Colin, when you say uh, you felt like there was work still to be done here, what would you say most excites you about getting back to work with this group in year two? Yeah, no, I, shoot, it was, uh, it, it's been a learning process for all of us. Uh, it's been extremely exciting. You know, uh, obviously through any, any journey, there's going to be challenges and, and things you got to overcome. But, uh, you know, I think being able to, now that we've got a lot of the, this time last year, we were trying to really, really build and, and reestablish some things foundationally, offensively, of how we wanted to do things. So being able to kind of build on that, so now everyone's not learning how to even operate, how to communicate, and all those things. We can kind of continue to push and uh, into those second and, and third, third levels of how we want to use now what we have. And so, uh, so it's an unbelievable group to work with. I mean, you look at up front. Uh, those guys are, are a charismatic bunch. They they work their butts off and really set the tone for all of us offensively. Uh, then you got the you know the leadership and and some of the skill that we have around them. Uh, you know coming together, it's 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 extremely exciting. And there's a lot of a lot of players that that we're excited to to try and as a coaching staff push and and again showcase all of their abilities to, to you know to the best that we can to to make us successful. When you look at your wide receiver room right now, you're going to have some catches available with the guys who left last season. So who's kind of stepping up already, and who do you imagine filling some of those key roles? Yeah, no, it's it's been really good this spring. I mean, there's been a lot of guys that, that have made flashes and, and made plays. Um, you know, Phillip Brooks coming back is, is huge for us with his experience and, and versatility. I mean, he can play any position across the board, and, and really, uh, he's really tracking the ball well right now and, and doing a nice job. Um, uh, you know, Keegan Johnson is, is, uh, has been uh, probably ahead of the curve as far as where even we were hoping he would be from a learning operational standpoint. I mean, he's been able to contribute and, and make some big time plays. And uh, then you got, you know, Seth Porter has really stepped up, who's been, you know, so heavily involved in special teams and, you know, has made a lot of big plays the last couple of days in practice. And, uh, you know, Erwin Nash, Xavier uh, Lloyd, um, you know, could go down the line there, too, of, of a lot of guys that have, have flashed and, and done some good things. So uh, it's good competition right now. Uh, you know, got to keep pushing all those guys forward to, uh, you know, to take, keep, keep pushing that room to the next level. Colin, you've had three seasons with Deuce Vaughn in the backfield. So Wildcat offense looked that much different without <clears throat> Deuce this season, or – is that kind of a work in progress this spring? Yeah, no, I, I think just like any special player like he was, there, there, there's no replacing him. Uh, there's no uh, – that, that's not – it wouldn't – it's not fair to him and it's not fair for anybody else, you know, trying to fill those shoes. So um, are we, will, will we be different? Sure. Um, you know, I think the, the, the interesting thing to that point that I think was what made last year's group so special and I think – the, their leadership and foundation they laid moving us forward. You know, last year you got three receivers with over 40 catches, a tight end with 35-ish catches, Deuce, a running back with over 40 catches, DJ Giddens with 600 yards rushing, Adrian Martinez with 600 yards rushing on very limited games when we wanted to run them. Uh, you know, so there was a lot of distributed production and even Deuce's individual production being down a little bit compared to the year before individually. Um, that's exciting because as, 
uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of pieces, and, and everyone's piece was was very very important. Will be very important moving forward. And and yes, there's a lot of capacity for guys that to step up and fill, no question. But I think there's a uh, there, there's a lot of opportunity, and, and people in every room have taken advantage of those opportunities to contribute. Ben Senate really expanded the tight end role with his 2022 performance. Mm -hmm. How do you see things stacking up behind Ben? Yeah, no, I, it was really cool watching how he and Will, especially down the stretch, were, were very much on the same page. And in the passing game and any part of the game of football, just your guys being on that in sync to that level is, is always fun and exciting to watch. Uh, Will Swanson, you know, is, is going to, with Sammy's departure, will, uh, you know, is going to have a big role in, 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 in competition right now with a couple of young guys that are, you know, are going to be really good players. Uh, you know, Garrett Oakley has flashed in, in the passing game and, and really made some, uh, some big time catches and, and is creating some separation in, in some patterns and things. So uh, really excited to, you know, what, uh, what he can do. And, and Braden Lofton will be in the mix as well. Uh, you know, as kind of that, that group moves forward. Two or three primary objectives for the overall offense performance to kind of install during this spring. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard to hard to narrow it down to three. You know, but but again, it's it's nothing it's nothing flashy. It's it's nothing. Uh, there's no magic wand to any of it. Truly, it's it's going to be what same thing we started and, and tried to do last year of of really breaking things down to the simplest minute details that <clears throat> you know that win you games and and from being assignment sound to fundamentally sound and and then playing extremely hard and and if we do those three things we'll be we'll be just fine is it easier to add in some of the wrinkles you want now and to kind of address the creativity stuff now that a lot of the foundation is set for your offense oh 100 percent. i mean just the fact you know we're not <coughs> excuse me you know, trying to, uh, you know, learn how to get it, get, get in and out of the huddle, get, you know, use, use the multiple tempos that we've been using, being able to have all that in place to then be able to clean up and make sure what we're doing is, is exactly how we want it, even from the, the very, very simple things. You know, there's a, there's a great beauty and simplicity, you know, that, that may look complex, but is really very, very simple. And so trying to make sure that we're extremely tight on those things and then, uh, be able to then expand, you know, uh, the different pockets and, and things you can do off it for sure. But it, it makes it a lot easier. Hi, Colin. Hey, Scott, what's up? <laughs> hey, not much. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you might be able to um, describe what you've seen in Will specifically, maybe how he's become a little bit better already from what you saw last year. It was so fun to watch through the through the process of last year how he was able to express um you know how, how competitive uh he he is and because he's so laid back he's he's so everything that you want out of that leader trigger man he's so stable he's so uh confident he's so consistent um, but then being able to watch him kind of as he grew and, and, and took more of a role and, and everything materialized how it did, his, his, his ability to communicate and show how truly competitive and tough he is uh, was, was really cool. And also on Keegan, he had good highlights. Um, <laughs> how Maybe what has he done to, uh, to surprise you or please you the most early on? You know, you could tell in, in uh, even the last couple of days, you know, of practice, his ability to get in and out of breaks is 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 special. You know, it really is. And so, uh, I, I think how he's been able to do that in such a short time with learning everything and and you know being new in, in a new environment. But uh, again, he he's able to create separation and get in and out of breaks, and, and it's been fun to watch. And it's, we're still working on you know our guys and my guys being able to anticipate and, and get it out of our hands so that so he can do what he does. I wanted to ask you about the offensive line. Obviously, it's huge to have all <coughs> those guys back. But at the same time, they're probably all going to be gone at the end of yeah. this year. How do, you, how do you balance that in trying to work some of these younger guys mm -hmm. in who've 
shown maybe that they yeah. deserve a chance? No, it, it's been an emphasis for Coach Kleiman from the start of spring ball. Um, and, and we've structured pra some practice time and doing some different things organizationally to uh, to account for that. I mean, there's, there's legitimately – uh, you know, more guys than I can remember at any one time that you'd be like, okay, hey, they're, you know, if they're not game ready, they're, they're darn, darn close, you know. So I think trying to develop that depth now um, and, and get some of those younger guys, uh, you know, some more reps. The, the Sam Hex of, uh, has, has done a great job, you know, in, in some of that uh, work in, interiorly. Uh, John Pastore has done a nice job outside. Carver Willis has done a great job and made some, uh, really good strides here from the fall outside, uh, you know, and some of those other names are already developing um, to be ready for that. And obviously, uh, Coach Riley uh, does a tremendous, tremendous job. Every one of those guys is uh, working extremely hard to, to better themselves and, and, and our, our unit there. Work them in in game situations. I know there's always talk about continuity yeah. on the offensive line, but is that going to be something you have to work at? You know, we'll, we'll take it a step as, at a time. You know, that, that won't be, thankfully, a question we have to answer, you know, anytime soon. But, but you're exactly right. And, and how do you get, because there's nothing like a game rep, you know, as much as, 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 as we try and as close as we get in practice, it's, it's different. And uh, trying to get those guys' experience is, is something we definitely. Definitely want, and but also compete and understand that, hey, the best guys have earned their opportunity, and you don't get many of those, you know, as players too. So trying to find that balance is uh, something we'll have to work through. Colin, what's yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, what's impressed you the most about Trayshawn Ward since he got on campus? His short area quickness is outstanding. His ability to to start stop, finding holes. Uh, something changes in, in the blocking scheme and has to make a quick adjustment that was unanticipated is, is impressive. I mean, he's able to start stop uh, uh, very, very well, you know, and uh, just a fantastic young man on top of that. I mean, his demeanor is outstanding. His work ethic has been good. So, uh, so glad he's here. And then it, it felt like DJ was just starting to scratch the surface at the end of last season. What most excites you about kind of what what he could do going into this year? Yeah, no, he his confidence, uh, you know, and it showed on the field, you know, week to week, game to game, through the whole season, but especially down the stretch, and and uh, the all the, his confidence in himself. Uh, I mean, every one of us as a staff had outstanding, unbelievable confidence in him when he did get his chances to uh, to make plays and and. Uh, uh, you know he's he, he's a different back than Deuce clearly, but uh, he we think he could be an absolutely special player and and have outstanding uh, production for sure. Anything else? You've had a, K State has had a history of these uh, Division One transfers coming in and being successful uh, offensively. You've you've talked about. Um, uh, Keegan and also Ward so far. How beneficial has the Division One transfers from what you've seen so far on this team worked out for you guys? Yeah. Well, no, I, I think that really is it, it starts with Coach Kleiman and, and uh, really trying to make sure that each one of, in, in each situation it's the right fit for uh, who we are culturally here, you know, what's uh, what makes them tick. You know, off the field more than anything. Uh, you know, if it doesn't matter how talented or or whatever they are, if if they're not the right fit, if they don't have the same mindset mentality uh, that's going to be a fit, and that who we want to be, and how we take care of people, and, and how you take care of your business, and uh, right down the line, then then it's not going to work. And so each been very proud each one of those guys. I mean, Julius Brents, and I, I could like you said, I could go on and on. Every one of those guys. Uh, has has fit that mold, you know, and and so um, uh, those guys do. Uh, they've worked in that light since they've gotten here, and and uh, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where any of us have come from, or done, or not done, or anything. We're here now, and and we got this season and team we're putting together, and and uh, it's just yeah. finding and making sure every, everyone's doing everything they can to to make it the best they can, and and that's what we're going to do, and that's what they've done. From from what you saw, Colin, when when you were recruiting Trayshawn to come here, 
how much was having all of those offensive linemen coming back part of the part of the incentive to kind of get him here? Yeah, no, I, I think it was huge. You know, I think uh, again, I, like I, uh, those guys are not just experienced good players. I mean, there's a and and those of you guys that have been around and talked to them, like you kind of know there there there's a vibe about them. There's a there's a swag about them that, uh, you know, how they do their business, how close they are to each other, um, you know, is uh, is unique, you know, and not that uh, yeah, it, it's unique. And so I think uh, they're the tip of the spear for us and have been. And then I think that with along of uh, how we were able to use Deuce and DJ, um, you know, down the stretch in all those different scenarios, I think is uh, is very appealing to, to running backs, and I think will be in the future because their his ability to be multiple and, and catch balls, line up different places, you know, put we would put DJ and Deuce on the field at the same time, more down the stretch, you know, and, and just a lot of those different things. I think credit to him, he looked at and and checked out and was real and uh, wasn't by accident. So I think all those things really contributed.